Welcome to Wildlife Rescue. I'm Mary Cummins, your host today, and with me today is Molly Hogan of The Nature of Wild Works. Welcome, Molly. Thanks Thank for showing you. up. Thank you. Thanks for having us here. And what exactly does The Nature of Wild Works do? The Nature of Wild Works is a nonprofit uh, wildlife care and education center. Mm -hmm. We're located in Topanga, and we have um, two missions, actually. One is to provide lifetime care for non-releasable wild birds and mammals and um, we utilize them as ambassadors to teach people about them. So we travel to schools mm -hmm. and uh, park sites during the summer um, with our wildlife like Tara here mm -hmm. to uh, show people animals up close that they might not normally see. And what type of bird is Tara that you brought here today? Tara is a red-tailed hawk uh -huh. and you can show people her red tail there. Beautiful coloring. She's a female uh -huh. and the females are 40 percent larger than the males. This oh, is a very old hawk. Hmm. How old is she? She is 27 years old. Is that old in hawk years? It's, it's pretty old in hawk years. Well, she looks pretty good for her age. Yeah, she doesn't look a, a day over 26. <laughs> <laughs> How much does she weigh? Is she heavy on your arm? She does. Actually, she weighs about four pounds, mm -hmm. um, and she's a little overweight. Oh. She uh, doesn't have to hunt for her own food, mm -hmm. so. She, she has uh, you. She has me. A to slave to feed her. To feed her rats and mice, which mm -hmm. is her uh, diet. Is that what they would eat normally in the wild? Uh, in the wild, their favorite food, I think, is squirrels oh. because they're diurnal birds of prey. Tree squirrels or ground squirrels or oh, whatever either. squirrels they can what get? Whatever squirrels they uh -huh. can get. Uh -huh. Usually ground mammals. Do they, I know there are some uh, birds of prey that also eat uh, smaller birds. Do, does ter would Tara eat a smaller bird in the wild? Um, she could eat a smaller bird, but um, mostly they dive onto their prey. Mm -hmm. So they're soaring birds that would uh, fold up their wings and dive at about 100 miles an hour to the ground. Wow. God, so they would speed. be. They don't maneuver so well in the air like that to uh -huh. catch birds in the air. So, what type of educational programs does your organization offer to the general public or to the schools? Or, well, we have a variety. We house a variety of birds, mammals, and reptiles, mm -hmm. including mountain lions, are our biggest animals. Wow, that is big. And uh, we do <laughs> mostly living with wildlife programs um, for the general public and for uh, classroom programs, and. Um, you know, I, I used to work at the Los Angeles Zoo where we did a show called Wild in the City. Mm -hmm. And so when that show was terminated suddenly, I decided to take the animals home from the zoo and continue the program because it was so valuable. Oh, no, I totally agree. It's very valuable. I think everyone needs to know about our native wildlife so they can respect them more, understand them, not fear them, and help protect them too. Exactly. So we also work with the Mountain Lion Foundation. We're in a coalition of nonprofits. Um, and we, you know, encourage people to respect wildlife. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we also are very involved in wilderness preservation, which is, of course, of course where the animals live naturally mm -hmm. in nature. What other types of animals do you have at your facility? Well, we have uh, bobcats, and we have also some mm -hmm. uh, confiscated illegal pets. Since in California, it's illegal to have most wild animals as pets. That's as true. You know. Wildlife, they don't make good pets, right. which they is don't. how you ended up with them. They don't sure. make good pets, and uh, They're not sometimes legal. they get out of the house and roam mm -hmm. around people's neighborhoods. Oh. Um, a couple of servals came our way. Oh in uh, that way. Mm -hmm. They were someone's pet and they're an African cat that uh, people uh, obviously recognized as something that shouldn't be in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you take care of native and some non-native animals We also. do have some exotic animals. Oh, okay. So most of these are, um, um, I guess, retired motion picture animals maybe even? They're retired. My original animals were retired from the zoo mm -hmm. and some of them are orphaned oh. or injured in the wild. For instance, this bird uh, mm -hmm. fell out of the nest 27 years ago or blew out of the nest, but mm -hmm. was found as a, uh, or just after she hatched on the ground, and someone, you know, picked her up and touched her a lot and decided mm -hmm. for some reason to not release her because she's perfectly fine. She mm -hmm. has all of her Gosh, beautiful faculties. Coloring. But um, now she's imprinted mm -hmm. and she's very old, so she wouldn't be able to fight for territory or hunt effectively out in the wild. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, uh, normally a red-tailed hawk would not be this calm mm -hmm. sitting here next to us. She'd be very I've never been so close to one. <laughs> be very nervous showing us her beautiful wings. That is a, quite a wingspan. But, um, so if someone were to find like a little baby bird, what should they do in the future? Obviously, they shouldn't have kept it as a pet and pet it. So. Right. Um, I'm not sure what her history is. Mm -hmm. um, she's been at other facilities before she came to ours, and she's so old. I've had her for seven years. But um, if you do find a baby bird on the ground, the best thing to do is to try and put it back in the nest. Um, a red-tailed hawk, um, you might want to call an experienced person to handle it since they are Mm -hmm. uh, b they do have these talons yeah. and they can't strike out at you. Most baby animals are pretty docile, but the problem with red-tailed hawks is their nest is so high up in the tree that it's hard to put them back in the nest. Um, you may have heard that birds, uh, that the mother bird will 
if you will touch reject it, you the babies yeah. if you don't. But actually, uh -huh. birds don't really have a sense of smell. So oh, that's interesting. That isn't, uh, uh -huh. that isn't really true. So it could be reunited if someone could put it back in the It could be reunited if you can get it back in the nest. But if, if someone couldn't for some reason or the baby were injured? Well, the best thing to do is to take it to some, a professional rehabber who knows mm -hmm. how to raise these birds and release them back into the wild. That makes sense. So you don't end up with pet birds? Right. Since you can't keep them legally as pets and they do belong out in the wild, the best thing to do is to try and get them back out there. Mm -hmm. And there are professional people who um, do a really good job of that. So what other groups um, have you um, gone to speak in front of? What groups have I gone to speak yeah. in front of? Well, last mm -hmm. night we did a program for a, I'll give them a little plug, uh -huh. for um, a group called, a nonprofit called OASIS, mm -hmm. oh, which educates them. people um, that are 50 and over. Oh, that's great. It I think that's a great idea, teaching children and teaching um, well, older people, teaching everyone about wildlife mm -hmm. is so important so you can respect it and to be able to care for a problem. Anyone can learn, you know, anyone can learn about wildlife. Mm -hmm. So even taking a, a hawk like this to a party, mm -hmm. you know, people are very, very interested when they see an animal up close like this. And there's always something to teach people. So they're just really valuable ambassadors, these education animals. Oh, I agree. Because I know, like, um, some people, they like to, like, poison ground squirrels or poison other animals. And that ends up getting into the food chain and the ecosystem. They end up eating the weakened and poisoned animals and just uh, right. Yeah, that's a big, a big problem. Actually, two mountain lions in the uh, hills around that. here died from secondary poisoning. Mm -hmm. You know, from eating, I guess, I guess, poisoned coyotes that had eaten uh, poisoned squirrels. And not only that, but it went a step further. It seems people were putting large chunks of anticoagulant poison out there for the coyotes to kill them directly, and it mm. was fish flavored, and the cats might have eaten it directly. Yeah, it can so really harm a lot of animals. In fact, uh, many yeah. children ingest poison every year that oh, was they meant do. for rodents. So. Oh, I know. It's so sad because they look like some of them look like little tiny candy. So the mm -hmm. kids think, oh, I found some candy. I'll quietly eat it here. Right. But it gets into the ecosystem and ends up in these birds and ends up killing them, which is just horrible. And then the ironic thing is, this is the best rodent killer. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. <laughs> well, the same thing with um, the coyotes. I mean, they kill the right. bunnies and the ground mm -hmm. squirrels and the gophers. Just let nature take care of things, and there's no need for poison. Exactly. Poison just cause, doesn't solve problems; just causes bigger problems. Right. Well, you know, one thing you can do is install an owl box um, near your in a tree near your home and encourage the owls to nest in the box. Where would you get an owl box? A hardware store or a feed well, store? Well, you can um, you can actually make them yourself. Our organization uh -huh. sells them. Um, they're just mm -hmm. they're not hard to put together. Um, but out, since they don't make their own nests, they move right into these uh, these boxes, and then they have young, and one barn owl can kill a thousand mice a year. So wow, that's amazing! Yeah, that sounds so like a, a much better type of pest control. Um, Some uh, natural pest control. Yeah, it's free, it's easy, and it's good for them. So, um, where is your group located? Where's your main facility? Our uh, facility is in Topanga right. Canyon, and we've been there for ten years. This is our ten-year anniversary. So we have about 40 uh, to 45 non-releasable animals, and we provide lifetime care for them. So, um, you know, we do a lot of enrichment for the animals, and mm -hmm. we take them for walks. Most of them are handleable, and uh, it, we're, the animal care is very important to us. No, that is very important. I agree, especially with the enrichment. I know how important, I'm sure, when you were at the zoo, how important it is in order to have enrichment. So right, exactly. I mean, the animals um, need things to do during the day, too. And of course, they don't have the life that they'd normally have in the wild. Mm -hmm. So we try and recreate that somewhat by giving them a lot to do, keeping them very busy and entertained. Mm -hmm. So if a school or someone watching this program wanted to bring your type of education to their school, how would they go about it? How would they go about contacting you? Well, we have um, a website, okay. natureofwildworks.org, uh -huh. one word, dot org, mm -hmm. and um, they can call us directly um, and book a program. It's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. So you do uh, programs mainly for younger children or for high school or whatever? Any, any age group. Um, it's really, especially, mm -hmm. I suppose, is uh, grades three to five. Mm -hmm. um, their science education, it's actually been mandated in California. Oh, really? To um, that science be a part mm -hmm. of the curriculum here. So. Uh, wildlife oh, I education think that's great. right into Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, uh, we need more people like you doing that because children really need to know. Because just from my personal experience, I've gotten in a lot of like animals such as opossums that someone has like tried to beat it to death because they thought it was a mutant rat mm -hmm. and they thought it was vicious and going to attack them when really it's pretty docile, pretty harmless. Right. Doesn't have a, a, a zillion diseases, doesn't carry rabies. Right. Opossums look pretty scary. To they do look scary. I agree. To people that uh, don't know anything about uh -huh. them, but once people uh, learn about them, they actually can be beneficial. Would Taro here find opossums yummy? Uh, she probably would, but opossums are nocturnal and she's diurnal, mm -hmm. so she might not run into an opossum mm -hmm. uh, very often. But an owl probably would find one. An owl, a yeah. great horned owl, would like to like to chomp on an opossum. Probably. <laughs> so um, 
Now, if someone uh, w didn't have access to the internet, how could they get a hold of you? Do you have a phone number? Our phone number is 310-455-0550. Mm -hmm. Well, it uh, sounds like you provide a wonderful service. And taking care of all these animals, I know it's expensive. You're a nonprofit organization. How can people help your organization? What type uh, of supplies well, do you need? Um, well, anything? we need all kinds of things. Um, in fact, one easy thing to donate uh -huh. is phone books. Oh. Our mountain lions like really? to rip up phone books. Oh, that's interesting. And paper towel rolls. Mm -hmm. We go through those like mm -hmm. crazy. Um, we always need that's financial well. support. We have mostly carnivores. Oh. They're very expensive to feed. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we have a lot of people to take care of that are taking care of the animals. So um, we always welcome support um, of any kind. But any kind of mm -hmm. toys for animals. The animals mm -hmm. like to play with toys. That um, makes sense. Food. Dog kibble, cat uh -huh. food. Um, I don't know if people want to donate rats and mice <laughs> for Tara. <laughs> She's making noise like, what about me? You yeah, left me right. out of there. Mice on ice, that's what I want, baby chicks. So, um, of course, money's always good. I'm sure they can probably donate through your website or just contact you. You can donate through the website. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Or uh, book a program where we'll bring the animals to meet you. Well, that sounds fantastic. I would love to um, have it be mandatory like LA Unified School District in order to have this program in there and make it mandatory. Cause yeah, I that mean, would be fabulous. We so do work important. for the Los Virginas School District. Oh, that's good. And we do um, a lot of work for the State and National Park Service uh, mm -hmm. in the summertime, providing campfire programs on how to, you know, coexist safely with wildlife. We're out hiking in the, mm -hmm. in the uh, wilderness areas out there. Well, tell me a little bit about the other animals that you have at your facility or your sanctuary. Well, we have uh, African servals. Mm -hmm. um, one was a confiscated pet who had rickets. So a lot oh. of these animals come to us with health problems oh, because, because people don't normally no. know how to take care of a mm -hmm. wild animal. They think that all they eat is meat, and actually they eat the whole animal, so they need the calcium and the, oh, bones, the bones and everything oh. else that you get from eating a whole animal. Mm -hmm. And so he, uh, he had a, broke his leg immediately upon oh. arrival, started oh. playing with my dog, and had a big mm -hmm. cast on his leg. and. Um, He's quite healthy now. We've taken good care of him, but uh, he's a he's a really great outreach program animal. He goes oh, to our good. programs too. Okay. And we have uh, four mountain lions. We have a mm -hmm. blind mountain lion who was uh, abused or neglected, oh. actually. As so a someone youngster. actually tried to keep a mountain lion as a pet, or um, yes, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. That's just amazing. You know, the animals are when they're acquired. Um, by people illegally, it, it's usually as babies. Mm -hmm. So baby animals are always cute, yeah. and you really don't think and they're going to, to get big. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, they're just these cute little uh -huh. kittens. They're spotted when they're little, and they have big blue eyes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, it's irresistible. It's hard to resist them, mm -hmm. um, but they do grow into big, dangerous predators. And people usually realize this, and uh, they end up at a shelter, or they get, you know, caught by the authorities because it's mm -hmm. illegal, and the animals are placed somewhere. So. Um, the best thing to do is get a dog and a cat. I That's totally agree. The, the <laughs> best pet to have. Mm -hmm. And leave the wildlife for the experts. And if someone finds, accidentally finds a baby mountain lion, they should contact a rehabber and have them rehab it. Yeah, definitely. You, have to, you should contact uh, Fish and Game if you find any baby mountain lion, which would mm -hmm. be very unusual to find because the mothers oh. uh, take care of them. They stay with their mothers for two years. Oh. So the mothers are really protective, unless for some reason the mother The mother was killed. died and they found the den or something? Right. Oh, that's interesting. Huh? So what other types of, um, do you have any smaller animals or? We have a prairie dog. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's a prairie dog with someone's pet. Oh, it's aren't illegal. they illegal in this state? In this yeah. state, okay. they're illegal. And we have kinkajous, uh -huh. South American relatives of the raccoon, very nocturnal. We have um, a variety of birds of prey. We have a barn owl, a great horned owl, a turkey vulture, and a kestrel. And we have coyotes and oh, a wolf really? named oh, Moon uh -huh. and um, bobcats. Well, tell me a little bit about the coyotes. What type of diet do they have? Well, coyotes will eat just about anything. Uh -huh. They're omnivorous. But we feed ours a prepared diet for wild carnivores. It's a zoo product. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, coyotes are notorious these days for getting into your backyard and even killing pets. Mm -hmm. um, so people Going should keep their trash. cats in at night. Yes. They go into the trash, uh, you know, mm -hmm. looking for anything. They're pretty opportunistic and they're very, very smart animals. No, I, I've, I've heard they're very, very adaptable because I get a lot of people saying, I, I saw a coyote, what should I do? Should I kill it? And I'm like, well, this is what you do to deter it. You know, don't provide it food, water, and shelter mm -hmm. and try to scare it away if you can. Exactly. That's exactly what you should do. Um, it's nice to be able to see these wildlife. We were lucky to have them living here. How you did know, you get the coyotes? Did someone um, try to keep it as a pet or? No, they weren't a pet. They were orphan coyotes. Oh, okay, orphan. Okay. So, the uh, Trickster and Mesa are their mm -hmm. names. 
Are they handleable? Do you take those to school? We take events? them for walks, but they're pretty shy individuals. Oh. Yeah. So they don't uh, travel to schools. But they are. Mm -hmm. They like the people that raise them. And so Tara here likes to go, go to walks. schools and show her pretty wings. Boy, that was a lot of wind power there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty powerful birds. They're very, very successful, these red-tailed hawks. And they're easy to see, too. If you just uh, mm -hmm. look up on a sunny day in Southern California, you'll probably see them soaring. Well, you know, it's amazing. I see them even soaring in the city. Mm -hmm. I've seen them in the city, and I was like, kind of amazed to see them that close. And I've seen also, what are the smaller hawks? Are the songbirds, what are those? We have uh, peregrine falcons, and oh. we have cooper's hawks. Cooper's hawks, that's Sparrow it. hawks, mm -hmm. or kestrels. That's why I no longer have a bird feeder, because I used to see one of those small hawks sitting on the line just waiting for them. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. So. Right. Plus, I don't want to attract other wildlife. Right. Bird feeders can do that. Do you have any uh, raccoons or skunks? Or we do, actually. We have oh. a skunk, and we have three raccoons oh, that wow. were found in someone's attic, mm -hmm. um, where they had um, caught the mother, thinking uh -huh. there was just one raccoon in there. Oh. And they took the mother out and released her back into the woods, and uh, then heard the noises of the babies mm -hmm. in their, the walls of their house. And uh, they had to, um, you know, take them out of the walls of their house. So that's another thing people need to be careful of, that animals will often nest in, in uh, spaces in your house if they can get in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't want to separate the mother from the babies. Yeah. I get a lot of that. People call and say, I've got a raccoon or I have a squirrel in my attic or I don't know what I have in my attic. I'm like, well, thinking what time of year is it? Is it baby season? I have to go out there and make sure, you know, if you're going to remove them to either remove them all and be sure to close the hole so they can't come back in. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if you just kick mom out, she'll just rip it open to come back in to get her babies. Exactly. And let's see, we have a fennec fox. Uh, what does that look like? It's um, an African fox, the smallest canid in the world. Oh. They're the color uh -huh. of sand, mm -hmm. and they have huge ears. How much do they weigh? They weigh three pounds. Wow, that is small. Tiny. That is tiny. So what do they eat, like mice or... They eat, um, in the wild, they eat insects, a lot of insects. And he, he eats the basic diet that a dog would eat, mm -hmm. dog kibble. He likes uh, grapes, and he likes mm -hmm. insects. And yeah, he that's likes, uh, Sounds like a skunk. They like those, too? Yeah, he, he, he same diet as a skunk, really. Oh, that's interesting. So if someone wanted to have, do you have like a bird program or a mammal program or a large animal program? They can program? actually pick and choose. Oh, uh -huh. um, our specialty is native wildlife. We like to focus on that, mm -hmm. the animals that you, um, you know, see around here because we want to you know, provide people with information about them since uh, there's a lot of issues uh, as, yeah. as the human population increases. Mm -hmm. People have more issues with wildlife that live in their area. Oh, it seems so. I mean, some of the animals are extremely adaptable. They seem to thrive and do so much better right next to us, like coyotes and skunks and raccoons and squirrels because they're just living off of our, our trash, our landscaping. It's a lot better than out in the wild for them. So exactly. we can kind of track them. Exactly. And animals are born in the city now. They don't even yeah. come in from the wild. They just, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're well, that, born in the city. That's another thing. Sometimes people will trap an animal in the city and then just take it up to like Los Angeles Crest and release it. And it's like that opossum's probably going to freeze and, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> doesn't know how to, you know, knows how to go through the trash, right. doesn't know how to do anything else. Right. So the, the best thing to do is just to take care of your own environment. And, uh, you know, what you might like in your backyard, your neighbor might, might not like. If you're inviting mm -hmm. wildlife into your backyard, you, um, you know, you aren't really protecting the animals. And they can actually be destructive yeah. to you or um, spread disease to your pets. Mm -hmm. um, they can do some damage to your house, like a raccoon. Yeah, raccoons can. Even squirrels can at times. That's right. Even yeah. a friend of mine <laughs> had a squirrel. Um. Uh, that broke into her house and broke into the cupboard and ate the peanuts out of the cupboard. Oh, wow. It was so determined. Oh. It could uh, smell the peanuts. Well, they're just, uh, nowadays, they're just so, they've adapted that they can get along so well with us, you know, that they don't have a problem just going right into the house, helping themselves. Right. I get calls like that a lot. And I think a couple times I've even had a squirrel in my house. Mm hmm Chewed on the wood cabinet to try to get to something. And yeah, they have those ever-growing yeah. teeth. Yeah. They need to gnaw on something. Mm hmm She's amazing. So how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been working with wild animals for 20 years. Wow. Uh -huh. um, I started, I went to the Moorpark College Teaching Zoo, and um, I, I got a, a, my job at the Los Angeles Zoo doing a cat show, and worked with a lot of uh, wild and exotic cats. And then um, we did the Wild in the City show about the native animals, and when the shows were canceled, I relocated the animals to Topanga, and I've had Wildworks uh, for 10 years. It's amazing. I'm amazed they canceled the show. I think it's so very important. I mean, of all the animals in the city, our native ones that are here, because I get a lot of calls from people saying, I saw a deer in my yard. What should I do? I said, you saw a deer in your yard? That's wonderful. That's fantastic. You know, you don't have to go out there and kill it. Sometimes people think if there's an animal there, it's a nuisance. I have to get rid of it. You right. just have to 
let them understand that wildlife is supposed to be in the city. This is city wildlife. Mm -hmm. It's normal to see a raccoon or an opossum. You don't have to be frightened of it. Just understand it and learn about it and educate yourself. Right. I mean, it's important to protect your, your, um, your own environment and your pets um, from animals as well, just like you would from cars. I mean, you wouldn't yeah. let your dog run out in the street. Or so crazy people. If you, you know. have, exactly. <laughs> If you have a little dog, you don't want to leave it in the backyard unsupervised, like you wouldn't leave your small child unsupervised. <laughs> so we just need to be responsible for our pets. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's nothing personal. The animals aren't out to get you. Mm -hmm. They're just looking for um, an easy way to take care of themselves. Quick, easy meal. Definitely. There's the camera. There you go. I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> so So uh, about how many um, schools and events do you go to a year? Well, last year we served over 20,000 people wow. in Southern California. That's a lot. Are you the only educator? You have other volunteers? No, we have a staff. Who, oh, okay. Uh, a staff that transports animals. I would think animals. so. Cause a that's staff of people and of animals. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of animals. That's staff a lot of educators. Of feeding and cleaning and caging and transporting. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a big responsibility uh, taking care of um, wild animals for their whole lives. I mean, mm -hmm. this bird is 27. And, uh, and they live about how long? How many years well, this total? is about as long as they live. Wow. Thirty, hopefully thirty-five. She looks. She's great. in pretty good shape. Yeah, she looks great. I'm not a bird expert, but she looks fantastic to me. Yeah, she she looks yep. really good. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, it does take a. Uh, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to do. It's mm -hmm. a, a great experience. I thoroughly enjoy it. Oh, I know. I'm sure it's probably very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Although I'm sure it's very tough and time-consuming and money-consuming and it all adds up. Yeah. It. it um. It, it's because of people, the gener generous support of the public, as you know, with the nonprofit, that we're able to do it at all. So mm -hmm. we do really appreciate the support of people. And they can sponsor an animal. Someone actually just sponsored Tara today. Oh, how do you sponsor? How would, how would you um, go about uh, On our that? website, go onto the website uh -huh. and um, just click on the sponsorship form and mm -hmm. fill out the information. You'll receive a picture and a certificate. And um, if you sponsor the animal for a year, you can even meet the animal. Oh, that's cool. The to meet. So they can go to your facility and meet it? or we, They can do that, events? or we can bring the um, animal to them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. <coughs> so do you do any um, other type of fundraising? How else do you raise funds? We um, have an annual fundraiser every year. And, and uh, is that oh. at your facility or another, another It's um, It's venue? actually been at different venues. Um, this year, it's actually a garden party. Mm -hmm. um, in the Pacific Palisades, we're doing wildlife in the garden. Oh, that sounds great. So. And people get a chance to meet you, to meet all the, some of the animals. Exactly. Well, and we're good. looking, we're actually looking to, for a permanent site uh, where we can be open to the public. Mm -hmm. Where at our facility, we aren't able to be open to the public. Is it legally or physically you're not able to be open? Physically. Oh, okay. we're physically, we're on a, um, on a private road. Oh, I so see. It's, uh, it's so inaccessible. Oh, I see. So we're looking for a place where we can Another better share the animals with people. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Care for them and <coughs> share at the exact same time. People really need to see this. So um, are you actively looking for any volunteers or do you have any training programs or docents, um, We do take volunteers. Yes, we mm -hmm. do take volunteers. And um, that's all this information is on the website, too. We have the forum to download and all the uh, Nature guidelines. Of Nature of wildworks.org. Nature of wildworks.org. Okay. And then they can come and um, help care for the animals? Help care for the animals. Um, a lot, we have lots of volunteers. They do all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, one fellow builds owl boxes. Oh. Someone repairs mm -hmm. the vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, so people work directly with the animals doing animal care. And volunteers do programming and um, computer work. And there's something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a lot of work. A lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of animals, a lot of people, a lot of work. Oh, you have to ver very devoted people. There's a lot of people who really care about animals. It's nice to see that. You know, we get lots of um, really devoted people who help take care of the animals and do our educational programs to oh, teach people. That's wonderful. Yeah, I find that my, um, my volunteers are just some of the best people I have ever met. Mm -hmm. And it's just <coughs> so rewarding to work with great people like that. People who help the community, help the animals, help each other. Exactly. It all works out win, win, win. <coughs> So I guess, again, um, if someone wants to get a hold of you, your website is a natureofwildworks.org, mm -hmm. and your phone number is? 310-455-0550. Okay. And any other way that the public out there can help you help the animals? Um, well, you can sponsor an animal. Mm -hmm. You can arrange to have a wildlife program at your home mm -hmm. or at your school or um, any venue that 
uh, we take the animals almost everywhere, mm -hmm. and that's a great way to um, for everyone to meet the animals up close and to personalize the experience. That's the best way, probably, to um, to participate. Mm -hmm. um, and we have in the in the summertime we have programs that are open to the public for free at the park service. Oh. So you can check out our website and find oh, out when those programs too. are uh -huh. open. So that's another way. That helps also support their habitat by coming to the parks, mm -hmm. uh, to the state and national parks oh. in the area. What different specific parks do you work with? Uh, Leo Creo State Park oh, okay. and um, Malibu Creek State oh, Park are two of the, be um, the ones that we do most often. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you do some wonderful work, Molly. It sounds like you have a wonderful organization. We need more people like you. We need more people to learn about the animals. And um, we need people like the public to get out there and help you, too. Great. Well, thank you so much for having us. Well, thank you. And um, that is a wildlife rescue. And thanks so much for being on the show. So what's that little sound that she makes? It's, uh, she's calling. Uh-huh. She's calling to, uh, to somebody. I don't know. I see something. Yeah, really. <laughs> so we're diving in the world.